How's it going, everyone? Michael Barton from Yahoo Esports here, and I'm joined by Echo Fox CEO Jace Hall to talk about a major announcement. Echo Fox has signed Justin Wong, Momochi, Choco Blanca, Tokido, Sonic Fox, and Scarf, Smash 4 player MK Leo, and you got one person to manage all of these people, former Evil Geniuses FGC manager Antonio Javier. That has happened. We also, I guess I would add to that, is we've uh, re signed Julio okay. Fuentes and uh, also re signed Mewtwo King. Man, this is like a. a Did an, you see it I, coming? Did you see it coming? No. I no, I was completely caught off guard by this. Uh, can you talk about your strategy when you were looking for players and how you ultimately ended up with this roster of like some of the biggest names in their respective games? Well, I mean, look, if you're gonna sign players, I mean, you gotta, <laughs> I mean, go 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 with the gusto, you know. Right. Uh, look, the fighting community, the FGC. Uh, is is loaded with talent. Mm -hmm. um, the the watching the games is incredibly exciting. Even for the novice who doesn't even understand a fighting game, they can they can look at it and uh, appreciate and and understand what's going on. And that's a, that's a big deal, I think, in esports in general as we sort of roll forward in in all of this growth. And you know, it, it became very clear to me that uh, the FGC is just this, this waiting opportunity for organizations like Echo Fox to get involved, mm -hmm. to help uh, provide opportunities and uh, you know, sort of an arena of, of growth for these players to get, to, to get even better than they, they already are. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, the, the FGC has always been you know, fighting um, you know, it, its own economic structure. It, you know, how, how do you... you know, uh, you know, earn enough money to, 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 to just be able to play all the time and pay your bills and all this other stuff. And so um, part of the overall uh, strategy is recognizing the opportunity that's there. You know, mm -hmm. the world is not just League of Legends. You know, we see our team, our FGC team here as, uh, as leaders, and it's just super exciting, and I just can't wait to, to, to watch them do their stuff this year. Looking at the list, I mean, you have a, a broad range of, of players across different games, but also experience and age. Uh, you know, young players like Sonic Fox, Scar, and MK Leo, who I th think is like 15, <laughs> 15 yes, years he's, old. He's, he's, a, he's a little, he's a prodigy. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, I think a rising star in Smash 4, but, uh, you, you know, on top of that, you, I mean, Sonic Fox is a guy who has won a lot at his age. Um, yes. But then you have the, the veterans like Justin Wong, Momochi, of course, Choco Blanca and Tokido, who have many championships uh, on their, uh, you know, trophies on their case. So I'm, I'm wondering what it is that the young players and the veteran players sort of gain from each other? Like, what do they learn from each other as a part of Echo, Echo Fox? Everyone is bringing something to the table here in terms of experience, in terms of their insights into strategy um, for the different games. But let me tell you, when you're surrounded by other champions, when you're, it, it really helps you step up your game and feel like you're part of something bigger and you're, you're contributing at that level. So... Right. Um, I want to see what happens when you get, you know, a Justin Wong in the same room with an MK Leo, mm -hmm. and they both are on the same team fighting towards the same goal, which is, you know, it's which is to to really just sort of dominate the the fighting uh, category. Yeah, I think you I think you're going to see some some really really interesting growth, and that's what we want to support. Let's change the conversation in esports away from the game as the central point of content mm -hmm. and the player being the central point of content how important is it to kind of build this brand around the players as individuals as well as the team you know when i look in the fighting game community and you go well, why would you ever go independent well i can tell you why because what else is being offered that is going to help you excel that's going to get you to where you need to go there's just not right. a lot of structure there to do it right right you know, do you know when you're not independent? You you decide not to be independent when you when you find a place that you think actually you're better off not being independent, being part of the team. So sure. the, the team's responsibility is to to be a value add completely around, not an obstruction to the success of a player. If if I'm a player, all I want to do is focus on being the best player I can. That's all I want to do. Okay. I'd love to get paid tons and tons and tons of money just to play that game. Right now, 
The structure is such that it's very difficult to do that because mm-hmm. how do you make money? There's not enough money in the tournaments to just you know to 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 guarantee yourself um, an, a steady income to pay your mortgage for years and years and years. So okay, so now you have to try to make money off of um, streaming. So now you're spending time building your streaming audience, which they want entertainment. That you know you doing the same thing. Uh, practicing, you know, a short punch for three hours, and that's not going to build build an audience, right? So it right. actually takes away from uh, the the ability to become the best player because you also now have this concern of becoming an entertainer and becoming, mm-hmm. you know, so so it's been hard. What you want to do is you want to have a situation where a team can bear the brunt of some of these these economic challenges and figure out the best way to to create those monetization moments so that the player can just get better and better and better. And the best team in the world is going to be the one that has cracked that nut. I think what I what I'm hearing that I appreciate the most is it, it's not only about, hey, you know, we're Echo Fox, we're we're picking up these players, we're just gonna slap a jersey on them and they're just gonna go on streams and play, right? Uh, it sounds to me like there's there's a real desire to also help uh, gr- the FGC grow. Uh, is is that the case with with the organization as a whole? That you know you there was an appeal to the FGC to you guys, and you wanted to get in, uh, of course, get these players in, but also uh, help the FGC grow. And 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 in what ways can you do that? I can tell you personally from 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 the bottom of my heart, absolutely. I want mm-hmm. personally want to see the FGC grow. Um, to levels unyet seen, I think that there it is a completely undervalued and underutilized category of video game, and and I think it really has much deeper roots in quote unquote esports or competitive gaming sure. than just about every other category. The goal is to figure out ways to elevate the FGC in its entirety. That's why we want to participate in all of these different games that are in the FGC. That's why we want to have open conversations with the people running Evo and all this other stuff. How can we bring more opportunity? Does having these players and helping them uh, become the focus, uh, the, the stars, help bring this into, bring us into mainstream? A better way to describe what Echo Fox needs to do mm-hmm. is it has to be able to provide the kind of content and, and context that allows someone who doesn't know anything about the category to identify and understand the value that's taking place in it. Right. Right. And, and so that's done through human beings. So what Echo Fox has to do is it has to help tell those stories. It has to help create an emotionally understood context so that these players and what they're doing can be appreciated at that level. Because just statistics alone won't won't do it. We think that there's a treasure trove of amazing people in the FGC and Mm -hmm. that they are underexposed. For the FGC in 2017, what is Echo Fox's expectations? Uh, Is it fair to expect things like Evos and Capcom Cup uh, championships with these players because I think once this announcement goes out, you're going to have, you know, of course, a big target on your back. Obviously, like any sports team, you want to mm-hmm. win. OK, you want to win. And we want to give our players all of the chances and tools and opportunities they can to perform their best. Right. But what we do not have is a gun to our players heads <laughs> saying you got to win. Right. That's all you got to do. That's you know, you know what I mean? We look. We know that our guys are likely to do well. What we really want to do is create an environment that can help these guys do better than they ever have. Okay. If we can do that, that's something that is repeatable. Because the other part is we want to develop practices and methodologies to bring in younger players who may not be sitting at the top of their game and train them and provide them opportunity and grow them to up towards the top of their game. You know, we've got guys who are at the top of the game and they're going to help to teach and educate us what goes into that. How, what is that about? So that we can build more of a system, um, uh, you know, uh, in our organization so that, you know, we have a real program for yeah. FGC. Well, Jace, again, this is a huge announcement. I'm curious to see how other uh, organizations react Again, congratulations for scoring a, a big a big score in the FGC and looking forward to 2017. Thank you very much. Perfect.